Today, we are going to discuss three books about the art of money that you might have read already, but you might find them very differently. The more you read about money, the more you realize that these books are just saying the exact same things in different ways and different methods. But they all come down to just a simple idea of how does money work? How can you use it to improve your life? And what are the things you actually need to do to make that happen? Knowing something doesn't help you, but knowing and applying actually helps you a lot. We know that the earlier you learn the basics of how money works, the more confident and successful you'll be with your finances later in life. It's never too late to start learning, but it pays to have a head start. The first steps into the world of money start with education. Financial literacy is the ability to understand and make use of a variety of financial skills, including personal financial management, budgeting, and investing. It also means comprehending certain financial principles and concepts, such as the time value of money, compound interest, managing debt, and financial planning. That's the whole idea we are presenting in this video. So the very first book is actually the number one selling book on Amazon bestseller list. It's called The Psychology of Muddy by Morgan Halso. When you will read this book, you'd think you had 100% control of your money. But after reading this book, you'd realize that a lot of different things happen in money despite our all efforts to get the odds in our favor. The best you can do is just try to do things in a way that keep you in the game for a longer time. The whole goal and objective of this book is to try to invest in a way that you cannot get wiped out. Invest in a way that you don't take on so much risk and vast annoying that keeps you invested for the longest amount of time. Many do not like the idea of having cash on hand, but having a bulked up emergency account, which basically means having extra money in there, it makes you have more confidence, which allows you to keep investing and allows you to do everything else you actually need to do. If you try to take on somebody else's illustration or tactic or lifestyle that does not apply to you whenever times get hard, you're more likely to actually run away and quit. The second book that we are going to talk about is going to be The Barefoot Investor by Scott Peck. Always remember, reading about financing money, for the most part, is just knowing a few good truths. This book might make you realize that as an investor, you might be playing games, for example, still trying to keep up with your credit score or manage things here and there. However, according to some serious investors who have read this book and applied it practically through their financial decisions, are actually living absolutely debt-free. It kind of just tells you to make a decision. Is this something you want to do or it's not something you want to do? So that's what it actually forced you to do. Now, book number three is going to be The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. A lot of folks don't know this, but Dave Ramsey is the guy who makes a lot of money. He's been doing it for a very long time. He has access to capital to invest the way he wants to invest. For the average investors like us, we need to be able to use leverage and use that to basically get along a lot faster than he did. This book of Dave Ramsey, which basically is more about the independence, it's not about the fancy house. It's not about using leverage like crazy, but it's about getting there step by step and not risking everything along the way. Now, these three authors, they're very different people but they all are going towards the same exact place, which is to have independence when it comes to your finances, to be able to make decisions that fit you and your lifestyle. One thing they kind of all agree on is basically when it comes to debt, it really is dangerous when it comes to investing. There is no clear cut way to do. It's just kind of like a way to use the economy in your favor, but nothing is guaranteed. And what you really do when it comes to financing money is just to set yourself up in a place where you can't lose. To set yourself up in a place where if things go wrong, you'll be fine. You'll be able to actually stick along and to recover. Books are a great way to educate yourself on any topic. If you read the right books, you can have billionaires, leaders of any industry, owners of business empires, and international leaders tell you exactly how they did what they did. You can find books written by people who started just like you and did exactly what you dreamed of doing. This is a powerful tool and it is open to everyone. If you can't afford to buy these books, you can get them free at your local library. While libraries may have gone out of fashion due to the widespread availability of digital material, they remain an excellent resource for those short of funds. 
The most important investment you can make is investing in you, and perhaps one of the best ways to do that is learning about personal finance. Managing your finances well better positions you when unexpected expenses arise or if you suddenly lose your job. You can also tackle debt more easily, such as student loans, and save more aggressively for a retirement. Poor money management, on the other hand, can be costly. For example, a low credit score means higher interest rates on credit cards, car loans, mortgages, and more. The higher the interest rate, the more you'll pay for what you buy compared to someone with a good credit score. That's what these books are all about. It's about strengthening your foundation. These are amazing books, and they absolutely tell you if you are actually interested in personal finance. These books tell you the truth no matter how you slice it, how you paint it, what story you say it. comes down to being the exact same thing at its core. Once you get enough knowledge, you'll be able to point these things also. But on top of these books, there are other three bonus books that we are suggesting as an honor recommendation. Number one is going to be Acres of Diamonds. It's a great and a short little book. You can read it like in a day or two. Its core is that wherever you are, you're able to make things happen. You don't need to go somewhere else. You don't need to get other opportunities all of a sudden. You're able to actually just make lemonade with what you have on hand right now. Number two is The Richest Man in Babylon. It's a book that predates all these other books, but all these other books come from that one book. When you actually read that book and you see exactly what it comes from, and the third book is going to be The Millionaire Next Door or Stop Acting Rich by Thomas J. Stanley. He has two books. They're pretty great. It's two authors. They tell you exactly who the rich people are in America and what they actually do with their money, where they live, what they drive, and it kind of puts into perspective everything. Because a lot of times we think that the rich people are the people that have those expensive houses, expensive cars, but in reality, those aren't them. They don't have fancy jobs that pay them millions of dollars. They have normal jobs, and that's what the book puts into perspective. That's the cool thing about literature. Whether you read a money book or the Bible or whatever book at the end of the day, the truth is fairly simple, and you don't need to complicate it. You don't need 200 books on the subject. You just need to pick a few truths and just kind of stick with it. There are no guarantees in this game, but there are things you can do to skew things in your favor without adding a bunch of extra risk. Guys, we hope this video actually helped you out a lot, and these authors help you out a lot. In reality, just a few truths help you, which is spend less than you make instead of that, invest consistently, pay off your home, and that's it, really is that simple.